So I posted a meme the other day that said cohabitation is just commitment with an escape hatch, which by that very definition means it's not a commitment. After I posted that meme, I received a message from a woman named Anne who wrote the following. Could you do a podcast about when it's time to speak to him about marriage? If you're 31 and you are together, living together for two years, for example, hey man, it's time to get married. And what shall we do if he still wants to stay like this? So I decided to address this by doing a quick video rather than an entire podcast, because I really don't think it takes an entire podcast to say this. Listen, ladies, I know that living with your boyfriend has become totally normalized, but don't make the mistake of thinking that because something's commonplace that it's harmless or even good. I think most people assume that because the no sex before marriage thing has been long buried, that shacking up just makes sense. You save money, you're staying over at each other's houses anyway, and no one blinks an eye about the fact that you're having sex. Moreover, research shows that many couples live together in order to test the waters. This is especially true for those who are products of divorce. They think living together will somehow increase their chances of success. It won't. There is zero evidence that shacking up leads to stronger marriages. There is, however, plenty of evidence that it's linked to lower levels of commitment and an increased likelihood of divorce. Why? Well, for one thing, women are far more likely to view cohabitation as a step toward marriage, while men are more likely to see it as a way to test the relationship or to postpone commitment. And this gender asymmetry is associated with negative interactions and lower levels of commitment, which makes sense since the partners clearly aren't on the same page, which is going to be a problem in any relationship. Shacking up also doesn't allow for the objectivity that couples need in trying to determine whether or not they should marry the other person. Instead, they get in deeper and deeper until they can't see the forest for the trees. As a result, they end up sliding into marriage rather than deciding to marry. There's actual research on this, talking about if you just actually Google sliding into marriage, you'll you'll find it. Living in separate spaces makes it significantly easier to make a well-thought-out decision. But the greatest problem with shacking up is the one we never talk about, and that's the psychological toll that moving in with someone only to later move out takes. It may be logistically easier to separate after shacking up than it is after getting divorced, but the emotional baggage people carry with them into their new relationship is significant. And if you've had multiple living partners, you can multiply the baggage. The ability to trust diminishes with each broken relationship, whether we live with them or not, often until one's ability to trust has been completely shattered. There's also the fact that lack of commitment makes most women uneasy, even though We like to pretend otherwise. A woman's need for emotional security is more pronounced than a man's. So no matter how content a woman may appear to be in a cohabitating relationship, deep down what she wants, at least eventually, is a ring. There's just no upside to cohabitation. At the very least, it will take up valuable time that could otherwise be spent dating marriage-minded men. If a man asks you to move in with him, he's not your man. He's not ready to get married or he doesn't want to marry you and living with him is not going to change his mind. A man knows what he wants when he sees it and when he's ready. And if all that isn't convincing enough, there's this. You as a woman have a biological clock and your boyfriend does not. That means shacking up benefits him, not you, since you will potentially waste X number of years hoping, but not knowing, if the relationship is going to last. Then at some point you'll feel the clock ticking, like this gal Anne, who reached out to me, and begin to nag your guy about whether or not he plans to marry you. If he refuses, you're back to the drawing board at a very late stage of life, and that is not a place you want to be. My advice to you, Anne, and to every woman out there in the same boat is not to walk out the door, but to run. Cut your losses and run.